he thinks I, uh, I, this is a date? I'm a child! You are old and bald and missing teeth! Hello? I caught dumb bitch disease and I've been <coughs> hacking, coughing. I've been ill this entire trip. Get well soon, bitch. Wish me luck. I might be a changed person after this night is over. <laughs> Y'all, I fucking made it. I made it. I wasn't sure if I was if I, if I was going to make it happen. This has probably been the most stressful 24 hours of my life, and the most expensive. I'm gonna go get some fish now. When I tell you I've never been this tired in my life, it is 2 p.m. It feels like 6 a.m., which makes sense. There's a time difference, but I literally can't move. I literally can't move. I was like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I wanted to go to the Van Gogh Museum, but all the tickets are sold out for another week and I did not plan ahead. So no museum on my schedule today. I was gonna go to the park, but then I was like, that requires me moving my body. <laughs> so I don't know. I think I just need to like have some coffee or whatever. I have a reservation at 4.30, so I'm definitely going to that. And then I think after that, I'll be able to like do things. I didn't do any nightlife stuff last night cause I was just so exhausted. So it also doesn't help that I'm staying in an Airbnb with no windows in the bedroom, so I truly have no idea what time it is. It's cute in here though. I've never stayed in a hostel before. I usually just stay in Airbnbs cause like, I just don't wanna, I just can't. The idea of being in a room with like 16 other strangers on bunk beds sounds fucking horrific and I just feel like you don't really get any peace and quiet. Like there's people always coming in and out. I don't know, I've never stayed in a hostel, so I could be completely wrong, but I don't know. I live alone, so I just feel like it would be too much. It would be too fucking much. And if you get a room by yourself in a hostel, it's like the same price as getting a room in an Airbnb. Like right now I'm staying in someone's room and I did the same in Portugal. Like I was staying in someone's apartment while they were there and <laughs> i was just staying in one of, the, one of their extra rooms and it's like the same price as getting a single room in a, in a hostel if not cheaper so i don't know i definitely recommend hostels if you are fine with like bunking with a bunch of strangers and want to save money to travel like very valid way to travel but i just feel like if i want to like enjoy my trip be able to rest when i need to and not feel anxious about like people being around or someone like taking my stuff which i don't think happens often but i've seen so many horror stories of like female solo travelers and hostels like it's just not worth it to me and you there are so many other ways to meet people like people say oh like you won't be able to meet people if you don't stay in a hostel wrong incorrect so that's just me 
these bikes are no joke y'all i literally have been scurrying like a fucking rat in these streets trying to not get run over like i'm like more stressed crossing the street here than i am in new york city <laughs> which says a lot because there's bikes in new york city we have bike lanes we got all that but there's like no cars here really other than like there's cars but it's mostly bikes and then like the tram and I think that's great. I think that's wonderful. But those bikes, man, I always say this in New York. Like, I'm not afraid of the cars. I'm afraid of the bikes. And I mean that 10 times more in Amsterdam because those bikes don't give a fuck. Like, obviously, like, be aware of your surroundings. Like, I'm not a dumbass just, like, wandering into the street. But even when I feel like I'm, like, laser focused, paying attention, I'm still, I feel like I'm risking my life. After I left the coffee shop, I walked around for a little bit just to, like, take it all in. I was in the streets like, oh, I don't don't wanna leave. High as fuck, just like living my best life. And then I was hungry, naturally. So I went to look for some food. And there was one spot I wanted to try because I wanted to try some like traditional. The restaurant was full. So then I went to another place and that place was like about to close. And next thing I knew, it was like 8.30, 9 o'clock and everything was closing. And I was starving and high and alone in the dark <laughs> in the streets. Oh my God. I'm sorry to my parents who might be watching this. <laughs> Something that I really forget every time I leave New York City is like things close. Like things close at like 9 o'clock eight o'clock and i'm so not used to that like bars in new york close at like four in the morning sometimes 2 a.m which is like early but there were bars closing at like 10 o'clock i was like damn what y'all do at night y'all just like go to sleep what was crazy to me is like people are still out there riding their little bikes at like 11 o'clock at night imagine being like blackout drunk and like riding your bike home just i don't know why that's funny to me and i'm sure it's been done many times before like drunk driving who i got i got this snack hamkas hamkas what does that mean i need to google that because this chip tastes bizarre it tastes like the way you would imagine like a hot dog flavored chip to taste like it's so weird i don't think i like them yeah i don't think i like them at all something that i, I will never understand about certain european bathroom situations is like what is this why is there there's nothing to block the water this is extremely stressful to me if you just had a little divider you wouldn't need the squeegee thing like i don't see the point in that also there's a bathtub there's a sink but the toilet is nowhere to be found like i know they do the same thing in france there's like la toilette and then there's like la salle de bain so i guess this would be like la salle de bain il y a, il y a une douche here's my ootd so i got this shirt from episode which is like a vintage store here in Amsterdam and I was gonna wear those boots but I don't want to kill myself so but I'm just wearing the J's oops can we talk about the difference between thrifting in New York versus anywhere else because I swear to god thrifting in New York is fucking trash in New York there's so many deep pop bitches first of all so many people it's everything so close together like there's never anything good and you're not even like saving money by buying used clothes like you might as well just buy some shit from Aritzia because it's gonna be the same price so yeah I love shopping in other countries I think it's cool to like buy stuff when you're abroad because then like you know it's got a store and it's something that you know you can't get anywhere else i could get this in new york maybe maybe if i got lucky but that shit would be like 40 bucks this shit was 12 euros bye
<laughs> okay. Awesome. Well, hopefully I see you again when I'm famous and I'm on tour in exactly. Germany. Exactly. <laughs> and we can talk. I'm the guy. Yes. <laughs> okay. Have a good night. Send me a bye. Thank you. There's something so funny to me about my Airbnb key being left in a lockbox inside of a tree. So it just took me like 20 minutes to figure out how to lock or how to get the key out of the door. But you gotta turn it like this. It literally took me forever to figure that out. This was me. This is not that hard. Also, sorry to the woman who I tried to accidentally break into her apartment. I literally, <laughs> I was like, why is the door not opening? And then I was like, hmm, this might not be the right apartment. And then I heard footsteps and I was like, fuck. And she was like, hello? And I was like, oh, sorry, I'm looking for my Airbnb. And she's like, girl, you almost gave me a fucking heart attack. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. I thought this was the second floor, which it was. But she said it was upstairs. So I guess, do Germans count floors differently? Does it start at zero? Because to me, that was the second floor. So I felt bad, but I was like, I also, I a truly an honest mistake. Like, this is, I'm on the third floor. But I, can, I guess this is the second floor. When I tell you this has been the most chaotic trip of my life. Tell me why I left my luggage in my fucking taxi. I don't know what's going on. I can't even, I was like, is it drugs? Is it crack? Is it cocaine? Is it the goddamn weed from Amsterdam? I can't even blame it on that because it literally this trip has, <laughs> what's that saying? Murphy's law, Murphy's law, what can go wrong will. Yeah, honestly, it could be worse. I have the taxi driver's phone number, thank God. What are the odds of that? Wow. <laughs> this is why it's good to be nice to everybody because sometimes things happen and you're like, oh, remember me? Hey, yeah, I really need your help right now. I'm not this irresponsible. All the other trips have gone on smooth sailing. It was about time though. Something was bound to happen. With the frequency that I, that I travel at this point, there was one trip that was bound to be a mess and it happens to be this one so i'm riding the wave i'm going with it was i i guess i was just distracted because he was like asking for a picture and then i was like okay now i'm gonna go look for my key in the trees and like i just completely forgot i literally ordered food like it took me a while to figure how did it take me that long to figure out that my fucking bag was gone jesus fucking christ hi thank you so Hello. much <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so sorry. No problem. So this is your, this is your luggage? Yeah. So you can check a bit when it's okay? Oh yeah, sure. So, so interested. Do you like the place? Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. Yeah. Okay. Man, can, I, can we can we bag. the bag has been secured. I repeat, the bag has been secured. Truly God bless that man. He was so nice about it. <laughs> he was just so sweet. So going to coffee with him tomorrow as a, as a thank you but also just maybe you can give me some recommendations he was really nice so ah oh, man let's let's get on with the night shall we The acoustics in here are delightful. So, I'm washing me in my clothes. Drunk as fuck, bitch. I'm washing me in my clothes. The fun part about being a singer is that you can do dumb shit like that. Like, whenever you want to. Okay, y'all. Alright. We're gonna try and get into Bergheim tonight. Wish me luck. Um, this is the best I could do outfit-wise, but honestly, I think it's pretty good. So... I got this um, in Amsterdam. The lighting is trash. Oh my God. Everyone and their mother who has been to Bergheim has been like, they'll probably let you in. You look cool enough. So I'm like, okay, well, let's put that to the test. Let's fucking hope I get in. I'm going by myself. So that'll either help my chances or make it worse. I don't know. Okay, comment down below. And let's make bets. Am I gonna get into Bergheim tonight? Yes or no? We'll see at the end of this vlog, but don't skip. Just just guess.
y'all. Let's do a little get ready with me and I'll explain my last 24 hours. So I went to Bergheim, not really something I did not realize until like an hour of being there. I went to Panorama Bar, which is in the same building as Bergheim or it's like above Bergheim, but it's not actually Bergheim. I, but I had a lot of fun though. The music was so good. I was dancing my little tush off the whole night and I just, the sound was so good. The bass was just, <clears throat> basin. I met so many cool people and everyone there was so nice. Bitch, I felt like Naomi Campbell in that hoe. Like everyone kept telling me how beautiful I was. <laughs> it was crazy. And like, I get compliments a lot, but I think maybe there's more of a novelty because like, I don't know, I'm in a new city and like, there weren't that many black people there obviously because we're in Germany and so maybe I'm trying to like justify I'm just pretty regardless of like where I am but like <laughs> I just was so like flabbergasted by how nice people were and like all the compliments I got literally if I took a shot every time someone called me gorgeous I would have had to be fucking airlifted out that bitch and sent to the nearest ICU because everybody and their mother just kept telling me how fucking good I looked and I was like stop like <laughs> what is going on which is funny because when i left my airbnb i was like i felt cute but i wasn't like wow this is like the best i've ever looked <laughs> so it really boosted my confidence and i just like felt so i just felt so beautiful like i don't know how else to say it and and even though i didn't technically go into Bergheim, um they still were turning people away at the door which i thought was interesting because when i pulled up there was no line but um, they just let me in. They didn't even ask me like who the DJ was or like who I was there for, if I was on a wait list, cause that's usually what they ask people. And I was talking to some other people and they said they got questions out the door, but they just were like, okay. I mean, they're definitely German in the sense that they don't like smile and stuff at the door, but inside they're really nice, which is interesting. Like the attitude outside is very different than the attitude inside, which I was like, that's, I guess it's to intimidate people. I don't really know. <sighs> I just had a blast. I love going out by myself, especially in new cities. Cause like, I don't know, it just really opens up the possibility for like anything to happen and you can meet so many cool people. And also it does give you kind of like a cool factor. If you're like, oh yeah, I'm just here by myself. Like people really think that's cool here. So I had to, I loved the energy. I love the vibe. I love the music. I love the people. I'm going to try to go to Bergheim tonight. I'm going to go to Kit Kat first, which is like a B BDSM kink club here in Berlin that's also really popular. Um, I was talking to the coach at guy before I left Panorama Bar and he was like, yeah, just come on like a Saturday or like a Sunday morning, come at like 5 a.m. That's like the best time to come because then you won't have to wait two hours in line and like the party is still like very much alive and well at 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m. So I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna spend the whole night out which i never do this by the way like i'm not someone who goes out clubbing until like the sunrise every weekend i don't have that kind of stamina but you know it's a part of the it's part of the berlin experience also the clubs here are like next level so it's it's like fairly easy to like stay a while i got back to my airbnb around like i want to say like 7 a.m it was early in the morning and so do you guys remember that taxi driver i mentioned who i left my luggage in his car um so he was like oh like let's get a coffee tomorrow and i said yes because i felt bad and i was like maybe he'll give me like i thought he was gonna give me like travel tips for berlin and just like i don't know i don't know what i was thinking i just said yes because i felt bad um so i guess he thought it was a date <laughs> uh, i should have seen that coming i thought about it but i was like eh maybe it's not like that i don't know it was like that and i was in the car <laughs> i sound so fucking stupid when i say it out loud i guess maybe i felt like i owed it to him which is stupid because i did i didn't i mean he did me a favor so i wanted to show my gratitude but did i have to give him my gratitude through my precious time and energy no and so we're in the car and we're like driving towards the city center and he says i hope you don't think i'm too old to take you out and i was like oh like no like like in a in a platonic way and he's like sure but also more than that and i was like excuse me 
<laughs> and I was like, no, you're definitely too old for me. Um, no. And he's like, oh, well, you know, just like, it's friendly, but also, you know, how men and women. I was like, I'm not comfortable with that at all. Sorry if I gave you the wrong idea, but no, I'm definitely too young for you. His son is literally older than me. Like, what? his youngest son is older than me. What the fuck? And I was like, God, I'm such a fucking dumbass. Like, why did I? <laughs> this could have been a really dangerous situation. So we went, bitch, first of all, if this was a date, why the fuck did you take me to a food court in a shopping mall? like girl i am worth more than a fucking ten dollar meal from the goddamn vietnamese buffet the fuck that is crazy this isn't a date but if it was zero stars bitch zero stars and i was like this is so awkward and i literally just sat there in silence like the whole time and i was like this is crazy like i do not want to be here already and i seriously don't want to be here even more now that he thinks i i, I this is a date I'm a child! <laughs> you are old and bald and missing teeth! Hello? Something that I really find fascinating and in a way kind of respect or I'm impressed by it is men's audacity. Their unwielding, unabashed, blind confidence. Cause babe. <laughs> what the fuck did you think was gonna happen? I was gonna be like, oh my god, I'm falling in love and now I'm going to I'm going to move to Berlin and stay with the love of my life who's twice my age, toothless, bald, and big. Not my type, sorry. So yeah, it was super awkward. I was sitting in there in silence and he's like, oh like you're so quiet today. I'm like, yeah. I'm just really tired which i was but i like i was like i need to find an escape plan i need to figure something out because this is crazy like i really just got in this man's car <laughs> he could have fucking killed me and so i was like um actually i have plans with a friend so i don't think i can stay long um and also i need to like go do some shopping which i did but i would like to do it alone and then he like laughed like oh like i guess yeah, uh, like, I'll, I'll leave you to your shopping alone. And I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. bye. And so he left and like, that was that. And it was super fucking weird. Men are crazy. Like, what is wrong with you? Like, you have to be sick in the head if you think it's okay to take a, a girl in her 20s out on a date who you picked up from the airport at your big age of like, at least 50 like are you good i that is like so fucking wild to me um so yeah sorry i've been like i've really been sipping on dumb bitch juice i caught dumb bitch disease and i've been <coughs> hacking coughing i've been ill this entire trip get well soon bitch i bought a couple of things because i'm going to Kit Kat tonight and i was gravely unprepared for this trip so i didn't really pack any like cool stuff and then you have to dress kind of like kinky i was gonna buy a harness but they're literally like 150 dollars and i was like i'm never gonna wear this again Again. so i got this i'll show you later when i get dressed but i got this like little one piece thing and it's black um i looked on the Kit Kat instagram and it literally said don't wear black so they said like creative black outfits are fine just don't wear like basic black clothing like don't wear jeans and a t-shirt pretty much i had a i had a fucking donner kebab is that how you say it? That shit was gas. That shit was bomb as hell. The Germans put their whole fucking pussy in them damn kebabs. I guess I'll update you guys later. Wish me luck. I might be a changed person after this night is over. <laughs> so I got into Bergheim. Woo! Three people are just being on a bed by this one guy. And they're like, you know, someone offered me a fucking Pringle in the bathroom line in Bergheim. I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you so much. It is 6.05 a.m. That's all this not a German actor.
Shake your hands and fly to the Thank you. I love from this angle. It was huge. I'm like, I'm just like. Huzzah! <laughs> <laughs>